now. Uh, again, uh, if you have some questions, clarifications, uh, additional inputs, uh, you just simply put your questions in a, or uh, type in our chat box. No? So our topic for today, of course, is about uh, from platform-specific model to executable code. So again, a one, once a platform-specific design has been produced, it can be used as the basis for the implementation and an executable code. Uh, in this lesson, we show the mapping for a Java PSM uh, to Java code. So the process is similar to other related languages such as C++, C, C Sharp, and so on. So starting from the PSM diagrams and module description, class definitions in Java can be produced you now with some degree of automation. So each uh, construct in the PSM class diagram needs to be mapped to a programming language construct. So, of course, we have a main correspondence for Java. Let's say, for example, for class diagram element and Java program construct. So, when it, when it comes to class diagram uh, in uh, element, of course, when we say class, the same with Java program construct. Abstract class design, interface design. Uh, for the uh, class diagram, we use guarded class. But in Java program construct, we use synchronized class. Now in class diagram, we use leaf class. Then Java program construct, we use final class. Yeah. Now for class uh, diagram element, we use ut utility class. In Java program construct, we use static class. Now uh, in class diagram element, we use inheritance. But in Java program construct, now we use extend. No? And uh, interface inheritance, uh, then equivalent to implements. Uh, static attribute to static class attribute, no? uh, non-static attribute to instance attribute for Java, uh, read-only attribute to final attribute, abstract operation to abstract method, no? static met operation to static method, uh, non-static operation to insta instance method, guarded, no? guarded operation, uh, then synchronous method for Java. I, uh, this will be for class, no? identify attribute, association, uh, for Java, attribute of class collection type. And for uh, class diagram, we use constraint. No? Then for Java construct, uh, we use no direct translation actually. So from this uh, actually uh, table, no? uh, it can be seen that most of the class diagram elements map quite correctly to correspond Java elements, merely with different keywords being uh, used, like final instead of read only. However, the last three cases are more difficult. No? An, uh, I, an, an identify attribute that has the constraint uh, that no two objects of the class can have the same value for it. So this means that the constructor. Okay, to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our presenter this morning. Go ahead, sir. Yes, real. Uh, thank you, Doc Marmelo. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, please let me know if I am audible and if you can see my presentation. Yes, yes, yes thank sir. You. Both yes. Of All right. So the topic that I will be presenting uh, uh, today is from platform specific model to executable code. Um, so you might be seeing on my slides um, the uh, PSM. So as early as now, at least you know that PSM stands for a platform specific model. Um, so I will be providing you, you know, an abstract of this topic. It is like uh, the content of my topic. So um, I will be providing you a quick summary first. So this uh, chapter, so I am now changing to the next slide. This chapter shows the process of mapping from a Java um, platform a specific model to Java code. Um, starting from the uh, PSM diagrams and uh, module descriptions, class definitions in Java can be produced with some degree of automation. And each construct in the um, platform specific model class diagram needs to be mapped uh, to a programming language uh, construct and the synthesis pro uh, process can be 
illustrated by a simple example of a reactive control system for managing the passage of trains through a railway network. Examples are also uh, provided. Um, we are going to illustrate how inheritance and method pre and post condition uh, constraints are translated into Java and to illustrate the generation of code to maintain the values of derived attributes in order to satisfy their defining properties. It is also shown how to construct uh, platform independent designs and transform this systematically into platform specific models and finally to executable code. The methodology uh, proposed in the chapter is similar in intention to that of agile MDA or executable UML, although it is recommended to start from a more abstract a CIM or PIM consisting of a data model and invariance in place of the explicit me message passing of agile MDA models. So I will be providing you, uh, there are seven topics that we will be covering in this um, presentation. So first is um, production of a Java implementation. Uh, second is synthesis of Java code. Third is synthesis case study, railway signaling system, uh, synthesis case study and in inheritance example, um, synthesis case study derived attributes example, uh, data repository implementation in choosing a database, and lastly, a production of an XML data repository. So as I have mentioned earlier, once a platform specific design has been produced, so take note that it can be used as the basis for an implementation in executable code. So in this uh, figure, I, I will be providing you a figure or a table uh, wherein it shows, um, you know, the this table, most of the class diagram elements uh, map quite directly to corresponding Java elements. So merely with uh, different keywords being used, uh, final instead of read only. However, the last three cases are more uh, difficult. So we will be uh, focusing on the no direct translation, a uh, no, in, uh, let me check. So uh, an identity attribute has the constraint that no two objects of the class can have the same uh, value for it. So, and uh, this means that the constructor must check if the value has already been used and abort the construction if it has. Uh, likewise, for any operation that modifies uh, the attribute. An association directed from class A to class B uh, can be implemented as an attribute of A with the name of the B and role of an appropriate type. If the B and has multiplicity zero, one or one, the attribute simply uh, has type B for other um, multiplicities, the attribute will be of a collection type. And uh, an order associated, um, certain forms of such association and association end corresponds uh, very closely to Java uh, data structures according to figure 6.1. Uh, an ordered association end of multiplicity A to B corresponds to a Java um, array of size B. An ordered um, asterisk mul multiplicity association um, end corresponds to a Java list. An, an ordered um, multiplicity association and corresponds to a Java set. A qualified um, association with one or zero to one multiplicity at the unqualified end 
corresponds to a Java map, a map or an array or multi multi-dimensional array if the qualification types are all ranges from A to B. Uh, using these rules, we obtain the following outline uh, class um, declarations for the Scrabble system. So this has been uh, presented also from the previous uh, presenter last meeting. So this is a sample. So UML expressions uh, map directly to Java expressions. Uh, most operators such as plus, times, and minus on numbers are presented by the same symbols of Java. Div is presented by forward slash and mod uh, by percent or by percentage. Operations such as um, div or less than have a direct equivalence in Java as uh, add all and contains all in collection. So the uh, translation of constraints to executable code is the most complex step and can only be partly automated. Uh, the decisions required are which classes are to be responsible for maintaining the truth of a, a particular constraint. If the constraint is a class invariant, then it would normally be the class which is responsible for it. However, a constraint attached to an association might be managed by either or both of the classes that it connects. What data um, structures uh, to use to represent associations and attributes? And what algorithms to use to implement query and um, update methods? So the synthesis of Java code. Um, in this um, specific topic, in the following, we will describe one automated program synthesis approach, uh, which uses the following code generation strategies. The translation of constraints to executable code is the most complex step, can only be partly automated. The decisions required are classes are responsible for maintaining their own local invariants, only that is invariants which do not involve features of other classes. All other variants are made the responsibility of a single uh, controller class representing the entire system. Basic types are mapped to Java and uh, collection types as in figure uh, 6.1 uh, that I have shown earlier. And apart from algorithms um, already defined in the uh, platform specific model, the algorithms in the generated code are simply brute force um, iterations over all objects of a certain kind. In figure 6.2, UML to a Java architecture transformation, it shows that the, um, the architecture translation which takes place from UML, from UML to Java using this a strategy, controller interface, lists the externally available services of the generated executable. Uh, typically, the generated code is the functional core of a system. And this interface enables it to be used by a graphic user interface for the system. Um, further, this uh, table 6.2 synthesis strategy for UML elements describes how particular kinds of feature in UML are translated into their Java counterparts. Constraints um, A to be attached to associations RS, relating attributes of the connected classes have a systematic translation. Iterate through all objects X1 to X and connected by RS, evaluating a x1 to xn for each. And if this is true, perform an action to establish b x1 
xn. Uh, for example, in the class diagram of uh, figure 3.7, the constraint uh, triggered in this um, programming sample triggered equals true and that it will alarm uh, then the alarm is equal to true has the uh, it, it, it has the following translation to code this is written in the controller class which has sets private list systems equals new array list and private list sensors equals new array list of all existing system and sensor objects. Table 6.3, query form of loca expressions. It shows the translation of some loca expressions into Java. Var e in cases two and three denotes the variable ranging over e in the context in which the expression occurs. For example, for system, Var system is system X in the set triggered implementation shown here. As an example, uh, the post condition X uh, guesses that value of add guess in the lottery system is interpreted as the code guesses dot add new integer X. In Java, where guesses is a Java set, uh, there is also a systematic translation of state charts to code for um, operations specified algorithmically. Algorithmically. If class C has state chart describing the behavior of its um, operations, then uh, define an enumerated type for the basic uh, states of the state chart and add a variable state C of this type to the implementation of C. For each event that corresponds to an update operation, collect together all transitions for that event. Each transition in the code of O, where G and apt are the translations of G and apt respectively. Uh, we will be showing you now the synthesis case study of the railway uh, signaling system. Uh, the synthesis process can be illustrated by a simple example of a reactive control system for, a managing, uh, for managing the passage of trains through a railway network. So in this figure 6.3 class diagram of signaling system, uh, there are many constraints that can be defined for this system, but we will only consider three, C1, C3, and C7. If any location in a, a route or route is um, occupied, the, the route is occupied, uh, lock N is equal to occupied, then RTE is equal to occupied. C3, if a route is not ready, then some switch is in neither the normal or reverse position, then it is not traversable. So ready equals false, traversable is equals to false. In C7, here at the very top in figure 6.3, if a route is occupied, its signal must be set to stop. So RTE equals occupied, then SIG set equals stop. So of this, C3 is a local invariant of route and the, uh, and the others are global um, interclass. So the generated code is as follows. A class system types is used to hold all the definitions of enumerated types in the system. It also contains classes such as set to implement the OCL collection of data types. The checks on ST lock signal and add lock signal um, arise from the fact that this association end has multiplicity of zero to one. And local invariants of a class 
such as ready equals false, um, traversable equals false of route can be ensured within the class itself. So that is the uh, synthesis case study of the railway uh, signaling system. And the next case study is the inheritance example. Okay, so this example illustrates how inheritance and method pre and post condition constraints are translated into Java. So figure 6.4, an operation example, it shows her in that the class uh, diagram of this uh, the, the class diagram of this system. Um, th in this operation example, the pre and post conditions of I and C are class A, pre, true, and then the post is result equals ADD times two. And in class B, pre, true, and then post result equals ADD times four. Class C, pre at uh, less than 100, and then post is result equals ADD times four. And in class D, pre at uh, greater than three, post result equals ADD times nine. So figure 6.4 shows the class uh, diagram of this system. In this operation example, the pre and post conditions of I and C are in class A, pre is true, post is result equals ADD times two. And in class B, here at the middle, is pre true, post result equals ADD times four. In class C, pre at less than 100 and post result equals ATT times four and uh, class D, class D is um, pre at greater than three and then post result equals ATT times nine. In this um, 6.4 figure, uh, figure 6.4, it shows the class diagram of the system. And in this operation example, the pre and post conditions of I and C are class A, pre is true, post result equals ATT times two. And in class B, pre true post result equals ATT times four. Class C, pre at less than 100 and then post result equals ATT times four. And in class D pre at greater than three, post result equals ATT times nine. So preconditions of operations are expressed by testing the negation of the precondition at the start of the operation code and exiting from the operation of this test is true. So this is the example. So next uh, case uh, study, uh, synthesis case study is about derived attributes um, example. So in this example, it illustrates the generation of code to maintain the values of derived attributes in order to satisfy their defining properties. So in figure 6.5, it shows the class diagram of this system. So it this is the derived attributes example. So for person, we have n jobs in earnings, and they are both integers. And then for job uh, salary, both uh, it's also an integer. And um, for in jobs, it's equal to job dot size, and earnings is job dot salary dot uh, sam. And the definition of set job, set salary, add job, and remove job is due to the, to the need to preserve the truth of the invariance. So in jobs equals job that size, earnings equals job that salary that sum, defining the derived attributes of person. Because job is an ordered association, uh, the method static list get, uh, get um, ordered salary list jobs 
is used to obtain the list of salary values job jb.salary for jb in jobs so that uh, duplicate salary values will be retained and summed. Um, in the case of set salary, uh, job X salary, the change to the salary of job X may require recalculation of the earnings of each person object, uh, of each person object whose set of jobs includes job X. Okay, so this is the example. All right, so then um, next is the data repository implementation um, choosing a database. So a large number of database uh, systems uh, exist of which Microsoft Access, MySQL, um, PostgreSQL, and Oracle are some of the most widely uh, used database uh, systems, okay? And if we're going to compare, so I will be showing you a table 6.5 for the comparison of databases. So you will see here the um, it uh, it covers the data capacity and then concurrency, SQL support, referential integrity, and the operating systems. Okay. Um, in this uh, table 6.5, it summarizes the properties and differences of databases. And uh, furthermore, re referential integrity refers to the, um, the ability of the databases to enforce the integrity constraint that if a table row with primary key value X is deleted, then any row in any table that has X as a foreign key value to the first table must also be deleted. So foreign keys can also uh, only be set to a value if there is an, an existing row in the reference table with that uh, key value. So next is the production of an XML uh, data repository. So suppose that XML has been chosen as the implementation medium for storing the history of moves in the Scrabble system uh, instead of a relational database. Okay. This has the, uh, the advantage of independence of any commercial database system, but means that the data on moves and scores will be stored as possibly very large text files structured in a way that corresponds to the PSM class diagram information. The data to be stored must be uh, structured as a directed uh, a cyclic graph with regard to navigation from one entity, the master, to another subordinate. In the Scrabble game, this is possible with move being the top level entity with subordinates player and letter move and letter move having subordinate class letter. As an example, XML file representing the move C, A, P, starting on the center square could be this one. The structure of an XML file is defined by a data type definition, DTD file which lists all the tags that can occur in the XML file and specific their attributes and how they can be structured in terms of subordinate tags. This DTD means that a history is composed of a sequence of moves. A move consists of a score followed by a player and then by a sequence of a letter move elements. In turn, a letter move consists of X, Y, and letter elements in that order. A player consists of name, score, and player flag elements. And a letter consists of symbol and score elements. The X, Y symbol and score elements contain just string data, whilst the player flag 
can have either the value human player or the value computer player with human player being the default. So the mapping from a, a PSM class diagram to an XML DTD is the data must be organized into a strict hierarchy, a tree or directed a chi click a graph of entities. So the root of the XML schema is the master entity. If an entity E has attributes ATT1 to ADTN and roles, role one to role N, then its DTD specification is exclamation point and then element E at one and so on at N and then roll one and so on and then roll M. So an attribute is uh, normally represented uh, as printable character data if it is a number or a string. So this is the, um, the syntax. Um, element art and then PC data. So a, a Boolean or element of an enumerated type can inst instead be represented as an empty element as with player flag above. A role is represented as a list or a single item of the entity F uh, it is attached to depending on its multiplicity. For A uh, times role, we would have element role F uh, this is the syntax. Um, for a zero to one role, question mark is, um, is used. And for a one um, multiplication or asterisk uh, role plus is used. The default uh, no annotation means one multiplicity. So the effect of this mapping is uh, for each entity, uh, instance, its attributes are listed as subordinate tags with the attribute name, enclosing the value of the attribute for that instance. So a link to a subordinate, uh, subordinate object is represented by including the subordinate object within the elements of its master. An alternative way to specify the allowed structure of an XML document is via an, an, an XML a schema, okay? So writing XML for a class is a simple matter of printing out the attribute data enclosed by their tags. Uh, for example, the methods which do this uh, for the move histories are, This one, however, uh, parsing XML files and recreating object data is much more complex. Uh, there are two general strategies for parsing XML. First is SACS or simple API for XML. Uh, these parsers uh, traverse the XML document, generating events when the parser encounters XML tags or other content. Second um, strategy is DOM, the document object model. These parsers, uh, these parsers build a complete tree structure containing the XML document data. So their use of memory may therefore be much greater than a SACS parser, but uh, they provide a more convenient programming interface if large parts of the XML data are required, or if the data is to be modified by the program. Since the a Scrabble example that we have shown earlier, uh, we need to obtain all the information stored in the XML parse tree. The OM parsing is more appropriate in this case. If, if, if only selected items were needed, SAX processing could be used instead. Java 1.5 uh, contains SACS parsing classes in the org.xrnl.sacs package and DOM parsing classes in the porg.w3c.dom package. 
the DOM methods we will use are element root equals doc that get document element. This obtains the root node of the XML data tree. Node list children equals e that get child nodes. Get the immediate descendants in the data tree of element e. Navigation along the children list is typically via an iteration of the form. And the next uh, DOM methods is the e that get tag name. Get the tag name, a string of element e, and the ce that get first child. Get first child node of CE. If CE represents a tag that contains only basic data, such as score, uh, this obtains the data associated with CE. The sample, um, so this is the picture I'm showing you next is a sample of the Scrabble programming in Java. Okay, so I will be. Uh, you know, um, sharing this uh, presentation as well in our G drive if you want to review uh, the sample programming. Um, so I will be providing you a, uh, a summary. So this chapter again shows the process of mapping from a Java um, PSM to Java code, uh, starting from the PSM diagrams and module descriptions class definitions in Java can be produced with some degree of automation. Uh, moreover, each construct in the PSM class diagram needs to be mapped to a programming language construct. And the synthesis uh, process can be illustrated by a simple example of a reactive control system for managing the passage of trains through a railway network. Um, examples are provided uh, to illustrate how inheritance and method pre and post condition constraints are translated into Java and to illustrate the generation of code to maintain the values of derived attributes in order to satisfy their defining properties. It is also uh, shown how to construct platform independent designs and transform these systematically into platform specific models and finally to uh, executable code and the methodology proposed in this chapter is similar in intention to that of agile mta or executable uml although it is recommended to uh, start from a more abstract cim or pim consisting of the data model and invariants in place of the explicit message passing of Agile MDA models. So there, here are the resources. Uh, Advanced System uh, Designed with Java, UML and MDA by Kevin um, Lano. So that's the end of my presentation, Doc. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, of course, uh, to our presenter. No? Again, uh, if we are going to take the time to carefully design our system using UML, no? Uh, we need to consider the structural models of classes and associations, behavioral uh, models using state machines or operations and messages. Then uh, maybe uh, somebody were, were asking about why can't we use this directly to execute our system? So, uh, of course, we need to add detailed behavior no, of our system, which is best done using a textual action language. No? which should be at the same uh, semantic level as the rest of the model. So again, uh, the perceived or perceived issues of the executable UML, no? uh, making models detailed enough for machine execution details the purpose of models uh, for human communications. No? Uh, UML is not specified precisely enough to be executed, no? at least uh, at least not uh, in a standard uh, way, no? <clears throat> uh, graphical modeling notations are not good for detailed programming, no? Uh, <clears throat> then, uh, when it comes to the UML, uh, executable UML issues, issue resolutions, no? <clears throat> the uh, making models detailed enough for machine execution details, the purpose of models for human communication. So, executable models can still be more understandable than executable code. Because 
non-executable models are still useful too. UML is not specified precisely enough to be uh, executed, no? Uh, and the foundation, no, the foundation or the foundational UML uh, or the standard specifies, uh, specify or specifies precise semantics, no, for an executable subset of the UML. So uh, the graphical model not not notations are not good for detailed programming because the action language for UML uh, standard is specify a textual action uh, language with uh, FUML uh, semantics. No, all versions started from 1.0 finalization uh, progress. No, then. Uh, of course, when we say the standard of UML, we, we have the Unified Modeling Language, we have Executable Unified Modeling Language Foundation or yung FUML, and we have, of course, the ALF, no? the UML or Unified Modeling Language <coughs> Action or uh, Action Language. No? Uh, again, uh, in UML, no? uh, uh, to to again to re, to remind everyone that UML is a graphical language for modeling the structure, the behavior, and interaction of software, hardware, and business system. It's standardized by the Object Management Group or yung OMG. No, so <clears throat> uh, actually the first version of UML started in 1997. Then uh, at present, no, uh, yung pinaka version ng 2.5 actually yun na nagamit ko no yung uh, that is way back August uh, 2021 no yun yung doon ako nag-start talaga ng executable or unified model uh, language no so the foundational UML is a uh, executable subject of standard UML that uh, it can uh, be used to define <clears throat> in an operational style no the structural and behavioral semantics of system because the OMG or the yung, yung sinasabi nating group no uh, for the semantics for foundational subset for executable UML models no uh, uh, issued actually by uh, I think 2000 yan no 2008 or 2005 no uh, then uh, FUML yung foundation UML version no as I mentioned 2010 2011 and so on and so forth so excuse <coughs> the key components of the UML no is a computational subset or the foundation UML no is a complete subset of the abstract system or syntax no uh, we have the kernel no basic object oriented capabilities and this foundation UML subset have also a common behavior no the general behavior and asyn asynchronous communication then the activities of course the in the foundation UML we have the activity modeling, you know, including the structure activities, but not including variables, exemptions, uh, swim lanes, streamlining, or other higher level activity modeling. When it comes to execution model, you know, a model of the execution semantics of user models within the foundation UML subset. <clears throat> so the available uh, live model library of the foundation UML is the primitive uh, data types no we have boolean string uh, unlimited natural no and integer for the primitive behaviors uh, in the foundational uh, uml we are uh, we were using a uh, boolean a string and arithmetic functions for the basic input output we use based on the concept of channels no <coughs> now <coughs> excuse the action language uh, for foundational UML, yung AL, ALF natin or ALP, uh, this will be the textual uh, surface representation of the UML for modeling elements with the primary purpose of acting as the surface notation for a specifying executable uh, <clears throat> foundational UML behaviors with an uh, overall graphical UML model. But uh, which uh, which also uh, provides an extended notation for structural modeling within the foundational UN UML no uh, subset. So the OMG uh, R R F P no, yung concrete syntax for the UML action language issued no uh, by I think 2010 if I'm not mistaken. Then uh, the key concept no for the concrete syntax no 
Uh, we have the BNF, no? Specification of the Legal Textual Syntax for All ALF Language, no? So the, e, uh, the MOF, no? Uh, meta Model of the Abstract Syntax Free that is synthesized during the parsing of an uh, ALF text, no? With additional uh, derived attributes and constraints that specify the static semantic analysis of the text. And... <clears throat> The semantic of, uh, of ALF are defined by mapping the ALF abstract syntax meta model to the foundational UML, no abstract uh, syntax mod, meta model. So the standard model library of this is the from the foundation UML, no the primitive, uh, of course, the primitive types, primitive behaviors, and the basic input output. We have also the collection of functions, no. Uh, similar to OCL, no collection operators, uh, operations for sequences, and we have also a collection of uh, classes, no set, order set, bag, list, queue, no, DQ and uh, map, no, yun ang ginagamit natin for this one. Now, uh, again, uh, the when it comes to executive, uh, executable UML, uh. We need to consider the activities of the EUM, EUML actions and structure, and of course the asynchronous communication. We need to accept the fact that within the activities, now we have the activities in the parameters, we have the action in plus, we have textual notation in the executive UML, we have tokens, now we had offers, control nodes, and uh, structure, uh, control nodes and structural or structured node. Then at the same time. Uh, of course, uh, we have an activity which is a specification of behavior as the coordinated execution of uh, sub-coordinate action or sub or, uh, subordinate action using a control and data flow uh, model. Huh? Then, uh, of course, the activity diagram is a graph. No, a, a graph is structure consisting of activity modes. No connected by activity ages no so it's discussed already with your uh, uh what they call this one a data structuring algorithm no so we have textual uh notation no so the semantics for the aif no or aaf uh, notation is defined by its mapping to uml no so all behavioral notations maps to foundation uml activity modes no uh, or model no so when it comes to tokens, so the activity, of course, uh, is involved with an argument of what, as what our presenter mentioned earlier, a token is the container for an object, no, a uh, datum of uh, locus, no, of control that may be present at an activity mode, uh, values, you know, that the uh, output or activity parameter, no, or modes are uh, copied, no, to uh, to be uh, to the output no to the output uh, arguments no and so on and so forth so when it comes to token no uh, actually our presenter mentioned a while ago and we have also offers no uh, fork and join nodes also available and executable uml no so uh, we have also the control node no so wherein a merged node no passes on any tokens uh, it receives no which uh, also considered in the executable uml so then uh, again, we started to develop our uh, DFD during the system analysis and design period in our undergraduate program. So in the functional UML, uh, we'll, uh, we will allow no, the use of data store modes. No? Again, in a context diagram, we don't have database. No? Uh, again, and uh, we need to follow the, 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 the correct structure no, per uh, Per, per per model or per author or per uh, uh, author of different uh, model like let's say for example uh, in developing our data di data flow diagram and even context diagram uh, if we follow the uh, Jordan DeMarco uh, symbols we need to stick uh, with that no from the very beginning of your uh, prototype until the end no but if we wanted to uh, use or to utilize uh, gain in Sarson, so from the very beginning, from context diagram to uh, DFD0, DFD15, uh, we must be consistent to use gain in Sarson. And of course, again, as I mentioned earlier, 
uh, in context diagram, we don't have database. Na. Uh, we don't have data store. But uh, starting from DFD0 up to DFD15 and so on and so forth, no, uh, we are uh, using as a data store. Again, in data store, we need to consider that we have an in information and out. No? So it means to say that the database must uh, save or store, then it is also uh, able to retrieve. No? Uh, again, uh, when it comes to structure nodes, no, uh, input to the loop node, initialized loop variables available across all iterations uh, of the loop. No, alam natin yan, especially if we're using a a system flowchart or even program flowchart. No, but most commonly right now, no, maybe limited uh, professor no discuss uh, with a student. Uh, on how they will be able to differentiate the program, uh, the program flowchart, the system flowchart, and so on and so forth. And most commonly, especially uh, right now, I am one of the panel of all uh, students who are dependent their uh, proposal and even their uh, capstone too. No, I'm I'm always encountered problem when it comes to their uh, prototype. No. I don't know what happened, but uh, you are now in the graduate school and looking forward that you are still able to apply what you have learned from your undergraduate program, specifically on doing your prototype. No, Because even I couldn't able to see your program, provided that I have a copy of your prototype, I could able to understand all your or the entire uh, system or program. No? Uh, especially if you're going to give me, let's say, for example, your ERD, no? uh, let's say, for example, you are using also the UML no? and designing the structured UML and so on and so forth. No? So it is very important. We, we need also to consider that AIF no? uh, provides a traditional break statement. No? Most commonly, we're using that. And we need to take note that there is no uh, normative UML graphical representation or rotation actually no for loop or conditional nodes no then uh, we have also the expansion regions no so an expansion regions in the UML used to apply uh, subordinate actions on all members of an input collection because a parallel uh, expansion region applies uh, nested behavior concurrently to all allocation elements. And an iterative uh, expansion region applies, of course, yung, uh, natin, yung nested behavior no? sequentially to all connect collection elements. And all provides spe specialized uh, notation that maps to typical use of expansion notation. So, uh, when it comes to reduction, no, this is no a uh, short hand for yung lines natin na ginagamit na object, no, and uh, of course we use also insert, no, when it comes to ano. When it comes to actions, no, uh, in UML, we we have some of this will be uh, uh, invocation actions, object actions, structural feature action, and link action. So. When it comes to the invocation action, we have the call behavior, no calling an activity, calling a, a primitive behavior, no, and call operation, send signal, and accept event, no. And uh, for the object actions, uh, we have uh, value specification like true or false. We have create order no? of create object, yung new order, no. A uh, destroy object, no. Let's say order that destroy, no. Opening close parenthesis. Then we we also use test identify. No, yung order is equal equal to by order name. Then tapos yung ano natin is called to customer name. Then read self. No, yun yung uh, this na ginagamit natin. Uh, read extent. Read is classified object and a uh, reclassify object. We have read uh, is classified object and we had also reclassify object. No, so when it comes to structural feature actions, we have of course the read structural features, add structural value, uh, feature value. We have removed structural uh, feature value and clear structural uh, feature value. So let's say, for example, when it comes to uh, read, is uh, read, basa ha, basa, read, hindi read. Read, 
red structural feature that's order that customer let's say for example to add the structural feature value we use order that date place is equal to day and so on and so forth now this will be an example of a structural feature action when it comes to link action we have of course the what we call a read create destroy and clear association no available yan sa ating link action We have also a computations actually in the actions, no, under the UML or executable UML. Indexing, no, from one, sabi ng ani presenter kanina, and that's zero, no. Our presenter also mentioned about the increment, decrement, arithmetic or logic, comparison, conditional, and we have also isolation. Yung ah dollar sign this that sensor that get reading opening close that value yun yung isolation na tinatawag natin when it comes to executable UML no. So when it comes to structure, uh, structural and behavioral models, we have also classes and association for that. So the structural mode, no, uh, specify the relevant uh, instances in a domain that may uh, exist at any point in time. So structural semantics, no, define how a structural model contains allowable instances, no. Then a behavioral model, uh, like an activity model, specify behavior over time, and this will be the Behavioral semantics define how a behavioral model changes the state of instances over time. So, sa classes, alam naman natin. Pang sinabi natin class or a class is a classifier of objects, na that persists in the extent of the class with an identifier that is independent of the value of their attribute at any ah one time, na. So, under ng classes, we have attributes. Data types, primitive types, operation and methods, structural semantics, and we have also behavioral semantics under classes. No, so a class may have attributes, no, whose types are primitive data types or other classes. No, and so. Sorry. Okay, so I think everybody are familiar with data types, no? A data type is a a classifier, no, of transient data. Why? Ah, data for values, no? Ah, whose ah identify ah is based on the values of the attributes. Okay, so when it comes to primitive types, we have the UML 2.3, the auxiliary construct, and we have the foundation UML, which use the new primitive types package. No, include support for the new real real type. No, so the UML auxiliary construct has a boolean. Uh, integer, unlimited natural, and uh, string, actually. <clears throat> Then uh, we have, of course, as I mentioned, creating an order, so adding line and item, and canceling an order must be a behavioral semantics. It's specific on how behavioral model changes the state of instances over time. <clears throat> So I think when it comes to association, naman, we have classes and associations. Now we have structural semantics and behavioral semantics. Now, so most commonly, actually, no, when it when it comes again to asynchronous communication in the UML or executable UML. We have the signal and receptions. We have classifier behaviors and asynchronous behaviors. Then for the standard model library, as I mentioned earlier, in the ex executive UML, we have primitive behaviors, collection functions, collection classes, 
and the basic input output of course no so uh, i think everybody are very much aware no when it comes to integer functions no like ar arithmetic uh, comparison and conversion for the unlimited natural functions <coughs> we have comparison and conversion <coughs> for boolean functions we have logical operations and conversion for the bit string functions, we have bitwise operations and we have conversion. For the string functions, we have concatenation, size, and <coughs> substring. So for the collection functions, uh, operate on sequence of values of any type. So testing and as accessing functions, non-mutating functions, and mutating in place functions actually. Well, so <coughs> collection classes define objects that uh, represent collections of a value of uh, a given type. No, <clears throat> so we have, of course, the uh, different. Uh, no? Most commonly, we are uh, always starting the program using hello world. No, and uh, so on. So I think that's it uh, for the uh, summary of the discussion. More focused on the executive uh, unified modeling language. Thank you to our presenter. No.